Hi, welcome to Take 5. Today is January 2nd. Today we look at Luke chapter 2. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Luke chapter 2, verse 19. Mary believed what the angel Gabriel had told her as we read in chapter 1, verse 38. And sure enough, in the days to follow began the signs of pregnancy. Was she considered by her family as one being righteous enough that she would not tell a lie regarding something which had never in all of history ever before occurred? Apparently so, for at least she wasn't stoned to death. Further, Joseph, her fiancé, received a like visit from an angel, so he as well expressed faith in God's work. How and if over the course of nine months she discussed all this with anyone and what her pregnancy was like, we have no idea. This which she carried was not fully human. She knew that. Was there any anxiety over what he would look like as the Son of God? This is all left unanswered, but her full term is completed while they were in Bethlehem, and she delivers the baby boy. Not far from them were a group of shepherds who were brought into the news of the birth of Christ, and they hurried to go check this out. Again, it's also unbelievable what was happening. They had just witnessed the sky full of angels. Once in Bethlehem, they find this new family and share all they had seen, not only to them, but to whoever would listen. For certainly the birth of a baby in a barn drew some attention from at least a few. Those who heard didn't know what to make of it, and Mary continues to collect knowledge of all that is going on in her life, because nothing is normal. And it doesn't change, for eight days into Christ's birth follows events that uh, follows events at the temple in Jerusalem at his circumstance, at circumcision. Two older adults proclaim Jesus as being the Savior. At all this, his parents continue to be amazed and who wouldn't? There follows 12 years left for one's imagination, but it would seem relatively uneventful since Luke's intention is to give careful investigation of all events. But at age 12, another remarkable, remarkable event occurred. This would be what we would call Jesus' bar mitzvah, his becoming recognized as an adult. All of this seems odd. It makes one to consider that his parents had absolute confidence in Christ being competent to take care of himself and not being a rowdy troublemaker over which they needed to worry what problems he was creating. Once he is found in the temple sitting among the teachers, his mother asks him, certainly with a degree of anxiety, why have you treated us, your father and mother, this way? To which Jesus replied, did you not know I had to be in my father's house? Obvious recognition is given by Christ as to who he was and that Joseph was not his literal father. Again, this causes huge wonder for those involved, the teachers as well as his parents. The wording of Luke here is interesting of they not understanding his statement to them that he had to be in his father's house. Luke's not reporting any stories of his performing miracles while growing up evidence them as being fabricated. It's not until this event at age 12 that again something happens for which neither his parents nor anyone around them have explanation. There can be events that have occurred in your life that don't seem to connect to anything. Works of God, you would say, that you don't know at the, at the moment why they were happening. Words were spoken regarding Christ at eight days old, and a sword will pierce even your own soul to the end that many thoughts will be revealed. That for which it would be over 30 years later would only then make sense to Mary as she watched her son hanging on a cross and a spear piercing his side. Then these words would return to her and she understood how they had been meant decades before. Peter expressed that one day is a thousand with God. He has a perfect timing for everything that occurs in our life. 
A key concept on which to hold from today is that things which God is accomplishing at this time in your life may need to be simply locked away and held on to until it's time for them to connect in the proper place in your life. In order for all things to work together for the good of those who love him, this is necessary. Not everything fits in right at this moment. Life in God is not necessarily immediate. So hold on to those events that may seem odd or unusual at this moment in time, for God can fit them in in due time if we continue not to grow weary in living for him. Thanks for being here today. Now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.